Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of Samba Talks. As some of you might know, this ongoing series of Samba Talks these feature some of the works of research scholars of IIITB who have won accolades for their research in prestigious conferences. So today with us we have uh, Nitya Ganeshan, who is pursuing her PhD under the supervision of Professor B. Thangaraju. Nitya won the Best Paper Presentation Award at the 12th International Conference on Industrial Technology and Management held at the University of Cambridge for her paper titled Performance Evaluation of Virtual Network Service Function Deployment in Docker Containers. A brief intro about Nitya, she did her MTech from PhD College of Technology. She worked as a research assistant in the Indian Institute of Science under Professor Balakrishnan at the Supercomputer Education and Research Center and has served as a professor in RV College of Engineering for two years. Nitya currently holds over 25 publications, including conferences and journals. Her research interests are cloud computing, virtualization, software-defined networking, agent-based systems, and evolutionary computing. Today, Nitya will be talking about investigation of container-based service function chaining with OpenStack. To give a brief intro about her talk, network providers must deliver adaptable and reliable services in a competitive market. Proprietary hardware-based solutions lack the scalability and flexibility, leading to vendor lock-in and high costs. And optimizing performance via cloud-native network function placement is critical. So within this context, today Nitya's talk showcases a solution for placing service function chains in containers using OpenStack orchestration and also how future research extensions for 5G networks may improve performance and reduce costs. So the talk will be for around 20 to 30 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of question answer. Over to you, Nitya. So very good afternoon, professors and uh, the research scholars over here. So I'm Nitya Ganeshan, as he told about the introduction, everything. So uh, the, this is the title research paper, which we uh, presented in the Cambridge conference. So it's performance evaluation of virtual network service function deployment in Docker container. So uh, for this talk is concerned, before I move directly about what is this particular research. So I will brief about what are the technologies we have used and, and what are the things we have experienced and how effective that solution is for the network providers. So and I am ready to give so many future challenges as well, then how this research can be taken forward. Uh, with this, uh, So these are the agenda for this uh, today's talk. So uh, which I am, which I'll be dealing about. So uh, so when talking before I move on with this research introduction. So what do we need now actually in the transport? What what transformations we do expect actually? So we know we we do need some applications to be very fast and to be very agile, and it should be applications should be run anywhere. And uh, we should consider the very good scenario. So by 2025, so 1. Uh, some 63 billion devices by 2025 is getting uh, improved. It is when it is there. So we have to think about the middle boxes over there. So middle boxes, I, I consider like firewall or some intrusion detection system or like load balancer, something like that, some devices, applications. If this has come that how do we deploy it? Then how do we maintain traffic? Then how do we chain those devices? So there are since there are a lot and lot of technologies are there to see right from traditional networking to the container technologies. So in a normal introduction, so when these uh, devices by 2025, as per the report says that even it is there, then we have to worry about the network devices. So where do we put that and how do we chain that? So how do we create a dynamic chaining for that? So we no need of static chaining. We live in a dynamic chaining uh, world. So how do we chain those things in a dynam dynamic world and uh, we, uh, with this brief introduction yeah, no. so i'll uh, see this traditional networking so when we see a button from 1960 arpanet so it's a static chaining method and it is static middle boxes and we give static request say for example when i have to communicate from this building to that building through via some middle boxes so we will have a pre predefined set that we have to follow these rules so how do we modify that so i need something to be modified so i need something to be configured 
and I need my own set of way to be communicated. So how do we do that? So if we do all those things, how this creates a very great interest for the network providers? How do we reduce cost? And how do we reduce the delay? Uh, so all those uh, performance and all those research questions are raised in our mind. So with this brief introduction, I'll uh, deep dive into research what we have done and what all things we have published. Uh, so there are, uh, we'll call middle boxes as physical network functions earlier. Middle boxes are firewalls, load balance, intrusion detection system. So again, the next technology has come, we call it as network function virtualization. So we virtualize everything. So say for example, 100 uh, millions of uh, firewall, millions of load balance, we'll virtualize it everything. So again, the new technology has come containers. It's very lightweight. We can run anywhere. So it's not vendor, it's not vendor dependent. So we can run our applications. So that it's very lightweight as well. So that is why we moved into containers. So there are a lot of, lot of researchers like how do we create a service chain? We'll call this uh, set of uh, middle boxes or set of virtual network functions like firewall, load balance, or something like that. We create a chain. We'll call it a service function chaining in the general traditional form. Then virtual network functions have come, but somewhere else the key re challenges remains the same. So the next, the technology has come like containers. So by containers, now this should be the first report in the thesis. There are a lot of thesis relevant to VNF, like virtual network functions, physical network functions, but there is very less literature review. There is very less paper relevant to container network functions. Inside the container, how do we create a chain of all these middle boxes? And how do we containerize it? How do we reduce cost it? How do we reduce cost? And even when we see with lot of analytical report, there is no such analytical report for algorithm or mathematical modeling involved in it. So we sat for long months. So I should tell more than experiment for the mathematical modeling should took, actually we took around seven to eight months to create a mathematical model because there is no such reports for the how to create content network functions because we have to consider so many constra constraints as well. And we do we, we need to consider a lot of performance metrics as well. So, so this is the thing. And uh, so before I start with that particular paper, so I should, uh, I'm here to give some inputs for the technologies we used also. So we used containers. So specifically we use, what is containers? Very lightweight. It's very light. And everywhere, the, everywhere they're using containers. Actually, when you see in the normal hypervisor, we need the guest OS for that. We need a guest OS. Upon that, we have to install our uh, applications or something like that. But where the container, it is not like that. So that is one thing. And, uh, and, and, and we can say that it's very fast when compared with NFE, all those things. So we use that one. And uh, we use the technology called SDN. SDN means how do we route traffic? Say, for example, in the traditional networking, we have, we have to route the traffic. Uh, and there is no rerouting capability in the traditional networking. So how do we reroute it? And how do we program it? And how do we know that the future network is going to create some problem or it, it's going to have some? And how do we record the history? So all those SDN paces solution. Inside SDN, we call, uh, the, instead of, all the layers to be inside the, we have the two split layers, like control and control plane and data plane, where each does their separate work. So we try to build this technology as well. And this is very good uh, cloud computing platform. We integrated all those technologies. We implemented our work completely in OpenStack. So there are a lot of uh, cloud services, cloud uh, platforms are there like Amazon and uh, Google. And what this space actually, this is open source and we can configure it and we can design our open stack for your different use cases. Say for example, I, I'm running healthcare or I want to use my healthcare applications. There is some component called Urona where it does all the healthcare uh, efficiency as well, where I need to say, for example, I need to do some testing in open stack. There are a lot of testing tools available in open stack. So I should tell open stack is open source and uh, where uh, Rackspace and NASA started in 2013, something 2011, it's start, they have started and they have different components. Each six months, they have a different release, right? From the alphabetical order from A to Z. Uh, they, they will name it with a different open stack. The open stack version, which we used is open stack yoga. So they will have like different uh, uh, name for the different open stack. So it's open source cloud. It's for the high scalability. It, it, we use this open stack to integrate our container as well. 
So, so, so far now I'm talking about all the technologies, tools, how we work, and maybe for your different use cases, this may help you at all. So, and also while installation, they have a different set of installation open stack, like manual and dev stack installation, where we can choose which installation we may need for our own thing, actually. So it's all in one place. So once we set up, done. So all over thing. Even to the recent use case study, when we talk about Walmart and uh, PayPal, everyone are into the open stack. Each, each in IT industry, I should tell, they have their own op open stack setup cloud. So that is the brief introduction about. So instead of giving more technical about my work, I want to give general. So what this what work I have done and how this maybe help helping. So after that, we used NFV Network Function Virtualization. So how do we virtualize it? So I was talking about physical network functions like different firewall, all the middle boxes, how we virtualize it. We need some technology. So we use network function virtualization. With that method, we virtualize our virtualized functions over there. And we do have, we can also in with, with OpenStack, we can integrate a lot of technology, even with container. We can integrate SDN, even with NFE as well. So how how this technology can be integrated as well. So all these technologies we have used inside our project. And Kubernetes, so how do we orchestrate? So how to find my uh, application is healthy, how to monitor it. So for that technology, we use the Kubernetes for the high orchestration. And, and even the Docker provides, Docker Compose provides the orchestration, but that is for the smaller workloads. So this report, which I'm going to share now, so we have, this is the first report where we consider a lot of 300 requests, more than 300 requests we ran in the container, SFC, with the help of Kubernetes, because Kubernetes can able to hold the larger workloads as well. So with this brief introduction about uh, all those uh, technologies involved in my thesis, so what is service function chaining? This is my uh, uh, this uh, this is general. Uh, I'm going to achieve the objective now. So, what is service function chaining? Service function chaining. I've given an example. Like, say for example, I request. Say for example, I have to communicate from user A to user B. I want the request. Say, uh, I can be. It can be of any request, like load balancer, deep packet inspection. It can be of any request. Say, uh, the firewall to load balancer or DPA inspection. So, it's not the static way. So, you can specify the request where it has to go. So that is what the service function chaining and it has its own architecture. That is the thing. And so Nitya, yes. so uh, RAN is also uh, becoming more cloud-based, right? Yes. So you know about open RAN. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, when you talk about uh, containers, uh, are the RAN functalities included in the container or they are not? Sir, uh, we can- I mean, enable... RAN functionalities include, uh, you know, optimization, of the access layer and, uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, handoffs and things like that. So are they included here? So we have disabled that because we have to, we can- Are there, yeah, I mean, yeah, are there possibilities for possibilities. including it in the open uh, stack? Open stack, I have not checked it. Actually, it is not that. So we have just integrated the content. I, 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 I got to know that about your uh, technologies, that what is that, but deeply we have not implemented that. So now we'll enter into the research problem that what is service function chaining? So service function chaining, like, so how we create a SFC request and how do we form a chain? Now the problem, the research problem comes here that, so what algorithm do we need it? Need it? And how do I deploy this it in container? So there comes a research problem called SFC deployment problem. So how do I deploy in the container? So is there any methods and how do I create a mathematical modeling? And it should satisfy the lot of constraints like CPU constraints it has to satisfy. It has to satisfy the SFC placement constraints. It has to be satisfied. And it has to satisfy the delay uh, constraints. There are a lot of constraints needs to be satisfied inside that. So how do we design those algorithms? So it was highly challenging to that, develop an algorithm to create it. So with that, so these are all the research scope, like uh, how, how do I reduce cost? And how do, there are a lot of SDN controllers are there in the uh, SDN. So how do I choose which controller maps my criteria? And uh, how do I guarantee quality of service? And how do I say, for example, when I am creating the service function chaining, say, for example, if that failure happens, how do I recover from that? And is there any rerouting mechanism happens? Is If there are a lot of backtracking algorithms, something like that. So how do I reroute it? So this is my overall research scope. And these are all the research contributions we have done. 
with before i move on with the exact uh, paper what we are presented the first thing is that we have created a mathematical modeling with different constraints like sfc placement constraint there are a lot of research papers involved for the vnf study it's virtual network functions and there are only three papers which is relevant to container network functions it was very tough hard to write a mathematical equations like mathematical modeling to create and to map it in the experiment how this works actually so we have created sfc placement constraint end to end delay the objective overall objective of this thesis is to reduce operational cost but how much how many percentage we reduce cost and we provide to the network provider that is what the main overall objective here so we are created and uh, this this is this all the this also the one paper which we have sent to yeah, camp one quick question yes sir see in the model i mean yeah. it looks like it is a general mixed integer programming problem yeah i mean if you yeah mixed at, yeah mixed integer problem we have used actually so uh, that np complete or i mean you are able to solve for yeah yeah, yeah 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 you can able to solve uh, so we have like CPU utilization and we have taken a lot of, uh, the thing is that sir, it's a normal SFC, a normal mixed integer program, as you said, but when it comes to acceptance rate, the, well, there are only 50, 50 SFC requests can able to satisfy with the network function virtualization technology. But when we deploy it in the container, when we give a lot of SFC requests, so how, how, how much uh, request it can able to accept it? So how many SFC requests I can place it inside the container was my goal, actually. The, this is one work. And where we map with both experimentally and uh, the with the mathematically where i would say that for per sfc request when we calculate this was the deviation we got it so this 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 is the paper which we want here in this paper i would say where when we do it for the large sfc request like more than 300 sfc requests and this should be the first paper for large sfc request to be tested and how do we measure it and for each sfc request and overall i should tell that uh, for the operation cost so I, sh I should tell that it is being reduced to 12 percentage. So cost, overall cost, where when we compared with the previous model of VNF with this CNF with our own constraints. So we should tell that it's 12 percentage has been reduced. Again, to integrate it again with the previous, to do this, sorry, to do this experimental study, again, we got a confusion that there are two controllers are there. So again, we did, so the, chairperson were there in Cambridge, he uh, appreciated for this work that because there are a lot of SDN controllers, open daylight, POX, NOX, everything was there. Open Kilda was the first, uh, this should be the first report in the world to integrate it in open stack, that, in open Kilda. Uh, and we found that how this open Kilda can help. There are a lot of uh, uh, controllers are there like open daylight, NOX, POX, each does their work. Because when we have to integrate it in the new technology, when we have to uh, route the traffic or we have to do some application, we have to choose the SDN controller, which SDN controller we are going to. So that is the main part here. So even uh, this inside that paper, we have worked on this paper and where we found with different number of hosts. Just a quick question. Yeah. I'm sorry. For... Yes. This mixed integer programming problem, did you solve it uh, using heuristics? IBM or? Simplex. Uh, yeah, use, using heuristics. No, simplex. Simplex does it using. Yeah, that is for the solver. Huh. Yeah. For uh, the solver. Yeah, solver. So do you uh, solve it optimally or you have heuristic solutions? Yeah, heuristic, so, heuristic solutions also we have. I've used ACO and corny optimization. Inside that, we have used this MALP constraints. So we named it as improved ACO for that. So that is why we can able to optimize it further actually of course it's right nice question so so these are the controller after this all this study we have detected sorry, sorry, yes Wait, the graph graph yeah. delay delay yeah 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 it's in milliseconds so for what value that millisecond is the delay because so, uh, the software defined networks containers this is i think sdn containers yes, controllers can, yeah yeah so okay. we have uh so we have mentioned for the number, when we reduce it for the host, how, how far the delay, how, what is the delay happening inside? So when we send some uh, request over there inside. So when we, so I have changed, I have, uh, we have discussed with two different parameters. When we increase the host, what happens? So when we okay. increase the switches, what happens? It's of large host and large switches. This Per SDN controller, because from source to destination, there will be multi, multiple SDN controllers will be there. No, no, sir. So only two controllers we have taken here. Only two? Yeah, two. Only two we have taken. So that so is... This this y-axis is for one controller or two controllers? So this is for the open Kilda controller and this is for ODL controller. Two things we have mapped. 
no, no, how many controllers when the signal going from uh, from one source to destination two controller it is cross crossing controller one controller two say for yeah. an example yeah so this delay is addition of two controllers delay no sir actually as you said like there will be in sdn controller when you when you take there will be like uh, normal controllers will be running inside but we give high focus for the particular open daylight and the open killer because we do write our own push up rules there there are push up rules and flows and traffics are there inside the uh, where we can write our own flows and where we can write our own request for that so we do pass our request different set of request how it how it can carry how it can be carried out that is what okay the, your main work to reduce that delay yeah sir it can, it can uh, we can see that from say for example when we uh, i'm so this graph completely like for the number of hosts say for example for the different 30 switches how it is and uh, for the 60 switches how it is and 90 switches how it is like that so here see the complete thesis this complete this paper is all about we are we are trying to choose the controller which controller because when i'm working with odl controller with a different and the new controller the new controller has come like open kilda so this made us to choose uh, how this can be integrated in open stack and how this how this can help our with our further research finally we got to know that with our conclusion we got to know how this open kilda can be used for, uh, and we got to know that it can able to carry out more than 1000 flows as well more than thousands and thousands of flows when compared with other controllers open kilda or open daylight or something like that other controllers like that so we have to with that controller we have used stand b uh, this is our uh, malp based iaco constraints we, we use that as uh, malp constraints inside the and colony optimization because sometimes when we are creating a path sfc path from source destination it may fail or it may have some path and we need to we need some rerouting so with that our heuristic algorithm so we have this, we, we have thought like we can use like and colony optimization over there so with and uh, this is where we have worked and uh, at initially we 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 worked with only four cnf only two to four cnfs but uh, then then later on later on we have worked with lot of uh, like more than three uh, like more, more than 300 re sfc request with lot of cnf with this algorithm but this has not been published and we have also worked with a lot of performance metrics like acceptance rate and what is a processing time and what is this, how, how many requests it can able to satisfy? So how many, so it, we cannot say that well, till now we cannot, I cannot assure that with our heuristic, with the MALP constraints, what the, whatever we design inside the container, say for example, when we give 300 SFC request, we cannot say that it can able to satisfy all the requests as well. But sometimes, because that is why there are a lot of future works is going on like with the different algorithms like machine learning and uh, deep re reinforcement learning are, and they also uh, use it for like, 5G networks. They use the large, ne large networks, and they also work with large, uh, large networks as well. But and also, I should tell that we have worked with two different uh, to topologies. Sorry, I'm not mentioned here. Yeah, these are the two topologies we have worked. These are the two standard topology where we worked with high number of nodes with JP and Japan 48 nodes and NSF. This NSF net is a standard network where we worked with this 48 nodes as well, and. Uh, and the final, this work has to be uh, submitted. This is the final work that, so how do we, uh, there is something called OpenStack Magnum. So where we can uh, integrate with the container. So how this, uh, with OpenStack Magnum, we can integrate the container as well. And how this can be, how this can be able to create, uh, solve the SFC failure uh, path with this, because the Kubernetes has its own recovery, pod recovery mechanism. So it can able to recover the pod, but how uh, we can do that for that we have written two own algorithms here that is a final phase of our uh, thesis uh, i'm not and so this overall conclusion what all things we have done is that the first thing is choosing the sdn controller to work with inside the openstack and to containerize it and to give some lot of sfc request and to create a chain it was a challenging task so and when we see with mathematical modeling and the experimental modeling so when we see that correlation was about 4.56 percentage deviation and uh, and i can say this with compared with bnf model and the model which we have created in the experimental way where we can say with our experimental method that operation cost for the network providers for the future when they use this uh, uh, setup all those technologies whatever we have done so so all those uh, algorithm however how much ever we, we have done so this can reduce to 
12 percentage and i can say that uh, when considering reliability as a factor again there is a lot of scope future scope where we can uh, build our new algorithms as well and also uh, so we have done in our uh, like mathematical modeling we have created in some studio and we have used a um, open stack private cloud so if you want to deploy large number of requests we have we are bothered about large number of requests and uh, so how do we if we need to still reduce the operation cost and we have we do have to consider some other lot of metrics as well then we have to think about the large data center networks how do we implement that so that that is one thing and and this is this research completely for i should tell for the 5g networks like how this uh, network providers it can able to help the operation cost as well and here we have not uh, spoke about how uh, like uh, like operation cost we have we have just given like so say for example even the delay can also be considered as a future pack parameters as well so these are all the findings and uh, so these are the future research challenges which i have seen can be taken forward for the for the work with this uh, service function chaining in containers like first thing is edge computing where we know like it's cloud it's a subset of cloud computing so how, for edge edge devices how do we create sfc uh, path or uh, when when we are worried more about the flow request how do we create that do we need to improvise more algorithm for that or should we create some different mathematical modeling or should we involve with more constraints so we can look at that and what about like deep reinforcement learning for the future prediction of paths or something like uh, uh, say for example uh, uh, future prediction of paths or something like different uh, set of requests come from different domain so how it can able to track that that is one thing and for the 5g networks this can help and we can also integrate ml also with sfc so i think only uh, two literature review was two literature review study for sfc chaining with machine learning was there so that is one thing and for different domains so if you are specific about intra domains what about the inter, inter domain how do we deploy that so that can be taken uh, forward and uh, so these are all the publications we have done and a few are left pending and we also worked with the uh, open source for you journal and worked with shubham to create how this within the devops pipeline how this works with it. since we have worked with a lot of technologies so we want to put this as, and we have done this and these are our github uh, repository where we have put every what all things we have done and how many no notes where everything was there so and these are the references and thank you everyone for the patients we have to us. thank you very much Cynthia. very promising work okay so now we'll move into questions and answers Cynthia, it's a good work excellent work see uh, one of the reasons for moving to uh, for example container based orchestration uh, should be to uh, make it very configurable right so for example in a a uh, traditional telecom network, the it is the functions are wired with the hardware, and therefore it is very difficult to configure. Right? So one of the objectives of 5G, especially uh, with respect to network slicing for private networks and so on, it needs to be highly configurable, right? So that within very uh, you know uh, less delay, the operators will be able to configure it, right? Yeah. So how how do you think that this open stack Container orchestration is useful for that. So OpenStack uh, container orchestration is mainly, I should tell, for the high integration first thing. The second thing is for the scalability. So, and the third thing should be it's highly flexible for the customers in demand. So it's no need about the other components to work on. So it's all in, it sits in the same place, like compute storage networking. Upon that, say, say I, I, may, I may need some, again, and external storage as well so how do we fix those things so there's the different components so that is the plug and play uh tools are in open stack so in that way i think i should tell that it's very helpful for them. hi Nita, this yes. is Yogita. Yes. so uh my question is how you measuring the delay with uh, respect to uh the uh, controllers so uh when you are doing a service chaining those functions are uh, primarily will be pushed on to your hosts or uh, your switches or routers. So when you are considering the delay, so are you considering those uh, elements also like uh, routers and 
yes ma'am yes we consider that so, also so uh, based on that whether those routers and switches are again you know, open source or they are uh, having a hardware based uh, acceleration no they do not have hardware acceleration they do not because have because then the delay uh, will drastically change if they are hardware based yeah so we, even you can achieve from like 400 milliseconds what you are getting to some 10 milliseconds also if your uh, routers or the switches are hardware based exactly. yeah, yeah so i should tell like say we are varied with different level of switches like so for example different number of cores and uh, we do have a lot of nodes inside openstack say for example we have we have 20 nodes 20 25 nodes which we running in each nodes a separate vm machine as you know that so when when we take for particular different nodes it the value of course it may vary with different uh, set of and uh, as you said like say yeah we do consider uh without hardware acceleration system well. so those are again open source uh, yeah, yeah, docker, docker based nodes yeah 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 uh, any other question if not then we'll wrap up so thank you very much for your thank talk thank you so much for thank you very much